How powerful is music? So I actually released a clip a few days ago that uh, discussed this, where uh, the Chachamim say in the Gemara that uh, the, uh, the voice of a woman is considered nakedness to a man, meaning that a Jewish male is not allowed to listen to a woman singing. And the reason why is because naturally the way HaKadosh Baruch Hu created males is that if you listen to a woman singing, you automatically think of her naked. And that's a forbidden thought. Now, showing us that the voice or sound and music and so on has an impact on us. Now, the David Melech had a note in music that does not exist in the world anymore. No one knows it. Uh, but he had a note that he was able to play in order to elevate his serving of Hashem, elevate his prayer to the highest form of serving of Hashem. Meaning that a person can serve Hashem uh, through music and in uh, in, in prayer combined in the highest form that exists. But if the person's music is not kosher, for example, if it's uh, full of vulgarity, you know, uh, swear words, it's uh, immodesty, arrogance, and the like, which is rock and roll, hip-hop, and pretty much everything that's out there that has lyrics, if a person listens to that stuff, he's not only damaging his neshama, but also he's damaging his blessing in the world. Because the Chachamim say that if a person either listens or speaks a curse, a swear word, he can lose 70 years of blessings. Just for one curse word. Just for one swear word in a, uh, in a gangster rap uh, video. Now, the video that I released, you'll notice that a few people wanted to tear my head off for it. And the reason why is because I said that uh, you're not allowed to, uh, to listen to uh, this hip-hop and all of these lyrical music that's, uh, that's this junk that people listen to today. You're not allowed to listen to it, which people didn't have a problem with. What do they have a problem with? They had a problem with the fact that I said that you're allowed to listen to an artist named Nisim Black. Because he's a Jewish artist, he's a convert, that uh, is a righteous convert, that raps. But he raps about Hashem. So he uses this impure uh, uh, talent, or this talent that he has, that used to be used for impure ways, in a pure way. And a few overly zealous people that decided that I'm wrong. No, people that rap, they're like gangsters. No, it's disgusting music. Yes, I agree with you. If you rap or you rock and roll or you whatever, you, you uh, sing Middle Eastern music, I don't care. If you speak with vulgarity, with immodesty, with arrogance, then it's not allowed. doesn't matter what the genre is. But if you don't, if you speak about Hashem in a kosher way, what's the problem? Music is not supposed to be something that everyone likes. Some people will like it, some people will not like it. The point being, Rabotai, is that Allah is not made based on everybody's taste. Allah, the law of the Torah, is based on, based on what's allowed, what's not allowed. To simply think that something is not allowed or allowed because you agree or disagree with it, you prefer it or not prefer it, simply means you know zero, absolutely zero about the Torah. And in fact, you probably know less than people that don't study Torah. Why? Because the people that don't study Torah have never studied before. They have an excuse why they don't know. You don't have an excuse. You've been studying. So how come you still don't know? The answer is, your arrogance got in the way. Your arrogance got in the way where you agreed and you like everything as long as it agrees with your predisposition. As long as it agrees with your existing opinion. But the second that the Torah comes and disagrees with your opinion, all of a sudden, no, no, it cannot be that this is the Torah. It cannot be. It cannot be. And these overzealously people commit Chilul Hashem, Lashon Hara, Rechilut, every sin under the sun, public embarrassment. What? In the name of a Torah! 
That's how stupid people are. That's how dumb people are. They think they're making a mitzvah by simply deciding, no, no, this is not allowed. Why? Because I don't like it. That's not how Alakha works. Alakha doesn't work that way. And you have to be strong when it comes to this because unfortunately what's happened is that people think that being zealous means that you're righteous no matter how zealous you are. That's completely wrong. Being zealous is critical. But even more critical than zealousness is humility. If your zealousness does not come with humility attached to it, you are not zealous, you're arrogant. And you just like telling people what to do. You like telling people that you're right. But if you're zealous but humble, then that's mitzvah. How do you know you're zealous and humble? That you will fight to defend the Torah on rules you disagree with. Meaning, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, you're not allowed to marry this such and such person. Why? He says, I'm not allowed. And you disagree with it. Why? Because it hurts you. Because you think it should be allowed. You're really zealous? You're going to defend that rule. Why? Because it doesn't matter if you agree with it. You nothing. It doesn't matter if you like it. You didn't write the Torah. You're not the author of the Torah. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the author of the Torah. You don't tell him what to do. If you're truly zealous and humble, you're going to defend the Torah strongly on things you completely disagree with. And you will admit that you are nothing in comparison to the Torah. You're never going to be one of these people that says, yeah, I hear what the rabbis say, but I don't agree with it. You chamol. You donkey. You publicly say you disagree with Tamit Chacham? Who are you, Bechlal? Who are you? Why? Because you watched a few shurim. You feel you have, you have the right, Bechlal, to defend, to go against Tamidei Chachamim? You have the right to go defend something that's written in a book 5,000 years? You, your little opinion? That's the difference. In today's world, Rabotai, people think that being zealous is a mitzvah by default. So what do they want to do? They want to cancel everyone. How? Nothing's allowed. Nothing's not allowed to eat, not allowed to look, not allowed to see, not allowed to get out of bed, not allowed to live. You shouldn't breathe even. It's a sin that you're breathing. It's a sin that you're, you're allowed to, you're walking. It's a sin that you're thinking for yourself. It's a, everything's a sin. That doesn't mean that you are zealous. It means you're an idiot. Any idiot can tell you that everything is not allowed. But only a Talmit Chacham will tell you what's allowed, even if it doesn't make sense to you. The Talmit Chacham will find ways for things to be allowed according to the Torah and forbid things that are not allowed. Regardless of his taste. Regardless of your taste. Why? Because there's Torah in it. And that's why you have to speak very strongly against people that think that they are smarter than the Torah. That they are smarter than Tamit Rechamim. That toil and toil over Torah day and night. Why? Because it disagrees with their opinion. Who is your opinion, Bechlal? Who cares about your opinion? You think the world cannot exist with your opinion? Who cares about your opinion? It's very important you guys understand. There's a very, very clear key ingredient in forming the right ideology because sometimes people will pretend to be righteous and zealous by simply canceling everybody else out they hate everybody that's not like them that's not being righteous that's being a rasha arrogant a naval birshut the torah it's called despicable in the name of the torah and those people need to do tshuva very very strong tshuva their tshuva sometimes is more difficult than someone that's completely blank, never did a mitzvah in his life. Why? Because they think they're righteous. Their arrogance is so big, they think they're righteous. And that's why I have to speak so strongly about it, even though I care about those people too. Because th- to break their shell is much, much more difficult than to break a shell of a chiloni, a person that's completely secular, doesn't know Aleph Bet Bechlal. Much more difficult to break the shell of an arrogant person. 
So it's very, very critical we know. Your ideology is only right if your ideology constantly bows its head to the Torah, for the Torah, with a source, not your opinion. A source. Before you state your opinion, you have to think a million and a half times. Someone asked the Chafetz Chaim, how do you make Allah? You wrote the Mishnah Bucha, Bura. Who are you to write a Allah Mishnah Bura? How do you decide what Allah is? The Chafetz Chaim says, after I review all of the poskim that discuss this issue, any issue that he wrote about, which is pretty much the entire Torah, after I review all of the poskim 36 times each, then I, I, I write the Allah. After I look at the opinion of every single person that wrote about this law, of watching your eyes, of saying Lashon Hara, of going to the bathroom, of, of eating, of drinking, of, of being with your wife, of having kids, every law, after I look at every single posek that ever discussed this 36 times, then I'll write it. Then I'll write what the Allah is. How many poskim did you study, Mr. Zealous? How many poskim did you study? How many times? Do you even know what a posak is, Bichlal? Do you know what a psak alakha looks like? And that's the funny thing. Most of these people have never even opened a book of alakhot before. They have no idea what right or left is, but they decide that their opinion is so valuable, they make public comments on the internet, these keyboard warriors, and make a public chilul Hashem. And only the embarrassment that they get from my words right now is going to maybe, maybe help them undo the chilul Hashem they did in the last few days. Because that rabotai is a very, very critical mistake people make. They think that if you hate people, that means you're righteous. Guess what? If you were right, we wouldn't be allowed to talk to you either. You wouldn't be allowed to do kiruv. You wouldn't be allowed to help anybody. Why? Most people, what are they? They came from Abu Dazara. Either Abu Dazara Mamash, like Christianity. Or Abu Dazara of some other form of religion. Or there were idol worshippers that were going against the Torah in different ways. So if we were really, really strict according to the letter of the law, like they want, then we would go by the Ramam that says, someone that's Oved Abu Dazara, mean Apikos, and so on, now let me within six feet of him. Needless to say, speak to him. But they don't look at themselves. They look at everybody else that's not doing the one mitzvah that they're doing. Very important to know. Zealousness is only kosher if it's connected to humility. Humility is only there if you are going to fight and defend the mitzvah that you disagree with. Why? Because that's the law. That's the law. And the law is much more valuable than your opinion.